I was homeschooled as a kid. And then I went into um, public school when I was like 11 or 12. But when I was homeschooled, oh, hi, Ashley. <laughs> um, when I was homeschooled, my parents actually invested a lot into my personal interests. So um, I found out really young that I was an artist. Um, I just kind of just knew. I just started drawing and I was like, yeah, this is for me. This is something I want to do. So my parents um, invested in that. And that was something I'm very privileged to, to have them do to pay attention to that and give me that opportunity. Um, so from a really young age, I knew I was an artist and I was practicing my art, taking art classes through high school. And I decided that being an illustrator was not, um, marketable at the age of 17, because we all make great decisions at the age of 17. <laughs> um, and then I was going to go to school for photography. And then I was going to go for something called visual media, which was photography and graphic design. So I applied uh, to RIT for that position, or that, um, that course of study. And I got in which was awesome. So RIT is Rochester Institute of Technology. And that is how I came to Rochester, actually. I grew up in New Jersey. Um, so I came to RIT, I think it was 2006, and I very soon found out that I was not a photographer and that I had, um, I don't know, just made this this decision that seemed like a good, a good one, but it's based off of I'm not even sure what. So uh, I decided to focus on like making as much art as I could. So I worked with my counselor, my guidance counselor at that time. And um, I got, I fit in all these fine art classes. So I took like, calligraphy, I did typeface design, I did um, airbrushing and sculpture and painting and uh, um, like all these different fine art classes really whatever I could get my hands on. I just love fine art. Um, and as I was finishing up uh, my studies, I actually ran into something called the FOSS box at RIT. So the FOSS box is a group at the university that's kind of like a social group, but it's all around free and open source software. And it's giving people opportunities, their students opportunities to get connected to the open source world. And beyond that, there's actually a, a minor at Rochester Institute of Technology um, on open source. I, think it, I believe it is the first uh, minor in open source. So that was something that Fedora was actually involved in. So super, super cool. And that is my first like formal introduction to open source, but like I didn't realize before that I had a computer from high school. It was so old, but it was all I had. And my roommate in college was like, oh, I'll put Ubuntu on it. <laughs> and I was like, what's this? I don't understand. Um, but like, I don't have money to buy another computer. So like, yes, please put Ubuntu on it, right? Um, so I can just write my papers and stuff. So I also had a bunch of, so I didn't know that I was running free software when I ran into the FOSS box at RIT. Um, and it was actually through my connections there that I saw an opportunity for an outreachy internship. So the internship was for Fedora badges and the mentor was Marin Duffy, or Mismo, as a lot of people know her. Um, I dipped my toe in, and I, I introduced myself in channels and stuff like that. And I have to say, uh, based on my experience now, that uh, there's a lot more exposure on that program. <laughs> I think there were less applicants when I was uh, doing my thing. But um, I applied, and... 
I got the internship. I was so excited. At that time, I was like freelancing and like it was right when I was finishing school, I was like freelancing, like doing retail work and like trying to be an artist or something. Uh, <laughs> so I got this internship. I was thrilled because I was actually like making money and because I was getting a chance to do graphic design. And at that time, like I didn't, I had taken a couple graphic design classes, but I didn't think I was necessarily going to be able to go down that path. Um, and I ended up having an amazing three months. I worked my butt off. I made like 80 badges. I made a style guide. I made posters. I made um, resources for newcomers. I ended up making a workshop later on. Um, so the internship was just awesome. Really enjoyed the work that I did. And I could see it all going up onto the website. So that was like pretty cool, you know, but I was really just communicating with my mentor mainly and a little bit with the design team. And that was about it. So I was still poking around there because I had free time. Um, and then Ms. Mo actually contacted me and she said, hey, there's this conference going on. It's called Flock and it's for Fedora contributors. This is a perfect thing for you to do. Um, and I was like, okay. And she's like, you should, you should submit a talk for it. And I was like, it's, it's in another country. <laughs> I can't afford to go there um, for artists. Um, and she's like, no, 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 no. If you get accepted, they'll fund you. And I was like, mind blown. I'm like what? They're going to pay for me to go to Europe. Okay. I'll try for this. Um, so, so yeah, I submitted a session and it was accepted. I was just like, once again, mind blown. So I'm like about to get onto a plane to go to Europe for like, you know, just, just leaving college very recently, kind of uh, slightly unsure of life. <laughs> um, and definitely not the most confident person at that time. Um, and I went and I did it. And I gave a presentation to a room of like 50 people I did not know. And it was scary as heck. I'm just going to say it like that. I felt like I was going to puke a hundred times over. It was really nerve wracking for me. I mean, the whole thing was. And like going there on my own was crazy too. Um, but. I met so many awesome people and everyone knew who I was. Like I, I came, I came on to the scene and was like, Hey, I'm recat Nor. Although I do have the other side of this story. Um, but the positive side was that people knew that the work that I had done because badges was like kind of new and everyone was super excited about it. I literally just made like 80 new badges or something like that. So people were, working on earning them. And uh, I don't think they like knew who I was necessarily. Um, but I met all these people and they were so excited about the work. And I immediately met, I don't know if immediately is the right word. I forget exactly, but I, I met a group of people that were like, yeah, we're going to go out dancing. Right. And I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on board for that. Um, and <laughs> Yeah. And, and I ended, they like convinced me, I didn't even have to convince me to go out with them. And we, we went out in the town and I made friendship. I started friendships that I still have now that night. So, uh, we ended up being like the unofficial flock party goer group and we, uh, like go out to discos and, and, and do karaoke and stuff like that. So anyway, I just, I just made a, a, a really amazing group of friends right away. On the other hand, this was like six or seven years ago now at this point, 2014. Um, and it was like, I would say it was a slightly different time in Fedora. Like when I went to Flock, it was like 180 people and there was maybe like 10 women there. I think there was maybe some more ladies that had actually come with partners. Um, but it, it was like a, 
we are extremely a minority in that situation. And it was very uncomfortable for me. Like already having come from, um, you know, going through all these nerves about traveling across the world on my own to present all these people I don't know and all of this stuff. Like on top of that, there was like, no, not really many women there. And it was, it was overwhelming, you know, and especially because I, I'm a designer and I was going to this tech conference and every like circle that I walked into was like a conversation. I didn't understand anything. I didn't understand everything, anything that they were talking about, like barely, but I proceeded to introduce myself. Um, and then people were like, Oh, badges. <laughs> so we'd get on the topic of badges. So, um, I did get a little bit of like, are you here with somebody stuff or like, um, I present femme as a feminine person and I love wearing dresses and accessorizing. And I think that there's a trend, but probably in older generations for women to kind of um, assimilate in a, like what they're wearing kind of way. Like they'll also wear t-shirts and jeans. And I'm just saying that based on my experience at that conference, that that was what I was seeing. And I was like the only person there wearing a dress. So, like, it was just, I felt really out of place, but I was simultaneously experiencing these great feelings, like, these great connections and these experiences of friendship and also validation for the work that I had done and completed during my internship. There's, like, a lot of, like, conflicting, conflicting stuff going on. Um... I also like I went out with a group of people and I was chatting with somebody I met at the conference and um, we were off in like a side, like it was a huge place, right? For stories or something like that. And there was all these little nooks and crannies you could chat. So I was off chatting with somebody and I came back and somebody told me that they were making jokes about me being with this person who happened to be a man and honestly, I felt sick about that because you're going to judge me and make fun of me for talking to nine, like th this is a 95% majority of this conference. And like, I'm getting shamed for talking to a man. Like, so it just doesn't make any sense when you think about it like that. <laughs> so like, these are the kinds of things. And I don't think people even think about it as a big deal, you know, like someone's just kind of just like making an offhanded joke and they're not thinking about how this is already an uncomfortable situation for me that I'm consciously putting like continual courage into, to, to make it and to feel confident and like not lose my shit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, to not lose my myself or just run into a hole or something like that. So I was, I was having these like conflicting kinds of experiences and it was tough. I remember I had brought like a nice dress to wear to um, the the special event, like, so I brought like an even nicer dress, right? And I like wore it and on the top deck, you had to like walk in between all the tables, <laughs> walking down and just like having people just like staring at me, like, who is this person? <laughs> I just, I just didn't really fit at the way that I looked. Um, and it was just very, it was something that was very obvious to me, um, just by the way that I was treated. I don't think that it was malicious. I don't, I don't find it to be that way. I think it was more of a, of this person is unknown to us and that's a little scary.
scary in a way because I am, I was different, right? So let's move on. I, I made it. I had mostly a positive time. I'm still here, guys, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> uh, so I continued on. I continued to contribute to Fedora. Um, Mismo continued to include me and in stuff that was happening on the design team. She actually flew me out to Boston one time to help her um, hack on a website and to just catch up on badges and stuff. And it was a, it was a totally great time. Um, she and I planned uh, a design team hack fest together. I think it was called a fad, you know, it was multiple days. It's one of our funny acronyms. Um, so yeah, I continued on. And then I remember we had, it was a hack fest, I think in Boston for the design team. And I had some idea for badges. And I was talking to Ms. Mo about it. And I was like, I want to do this. I'm thinking about changing the way we, you know, run this aspect. I honestly don't even remember what it was. She was like, why are you asking me? I was like, well, because I don't know why I'm asking you. Because you're my, because you're the design team lead. That's why I'm asking you. And she's like, you don't, you don't have to ask me. You, you run that project. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, you run that project. And I was like, I do run that project. Actually, yeah, I do run that project. Because at that time, I was triaging tickets, making designs, um, giving improvement, like helping people with improvements, um, helping come up with concepts for art, uh, just doing all kinds of various things for badges. And I was like, yeah, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm the one running that. So... I think that moment was like a good realization moment for me that like, if you're doing the thing in Fedora, like you're doing the thing and you can make decisions about your project as long as you're making them with, you know, the proper amounts of consideration. So um, that means including stakeholders or people who might care about the changes you're gonna make. So. At that time, I think I did check in with the badges team and, you know, everyone's on board, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I, I find I had like ownership of this team and it, it really empowered me. I felt like I was doing something important. I felt like I was doing something kind of cool and offbeat, I guess, like not the common thing. So it was like interesting to me <laughs> it was like some kind of appeal um in that and then i continued on i did workshops at the different flocks i think i attended i have attended every single flock since prague uh, that was 2014 and then the last one i did a hack fest uh to try to it was in budapest a uh, hack fest to try to help the badges at that point, it was like an older program, sorry, older application, and it was uh, like running Python 2, and it was about to fall over, and so, like, we got to do something. We're like, we need an intern. We're like, how are we going to get an intern? And we didn't know. We didn't really know, but we did some, we did some planning. We did some writing of problems down and use cases and we had Renata there actually doing some usability stuff for the website. So it was a really cool hack fest. And it was like the first one that I ran. So that was a cool, it was like a session. It was half a day, but I still, oh, cool. I ran a hack fest. Um, and, and yeah, and that was 2019. So meanwhile, if you haven't been to Flock before, I will um, explain to you like at the end of, of the conference, we kind of have like a wrap up session and they give people a chance to come up to uh, the podium and say what, you know, what they're talk about their flock experience, right? So I don't know how it happened the first time, but at the end of the conference in this wrap up session, I was like the only design team member there. So like Matthew Miller just like looked like just like turned around in the crowd and like looked at me and was like you <laughs> and 
Um, right. So yeah, so he he was like, you, you need to go up there, and I was like, oh crap. But Matthew, little did you know, I was super hungover, and I did not want to say anything, but I did <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, um, I did have things to say, and that 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 was the point I was going to come to. Right. So it happened once, and then it like the next year it happened again. And like the third year, I was like, okay, I'm just going to expect this. But it was because I do have things to say and I, I do have um, opinions. And I think it comes from a part of who I am as a, a nurturing person, as a person who wants to bring joy into other people's lives. Um, I found leading that the badges team that I was able to do that for people. People found happiness and fulfillment out of their work on that team. And the mentorship that I was doing there, even in the small capacities or bits that I was doing it, I found to be extremely satisfying. Beyond that, when I was at the conferences in person with, with, with all the other contributors, I started to realize that I was kind of like a magnet for other women to come hang out with. And I think a part of it is because I have a welcoming nature and I'm just, I'm like, yeah, let's hang out. I'm down. Let's do this. You know, the more the merrier. Um, so I, I realized that it was kind of happening. And then I realized that I could like just um, encourage that a little bit. So I started going out of my way to introduce myself to new women that I saw at the conferences, um, very specifically, like I would go with that in mind. Like anyone who I, I see who I've never seen their face and they're a woman, I'm going to introduce myself, no matter how awkward I feel <laughs> or like how much I don't want to do this, I am going to do this. Um, because it, it was really hard for me to feel welcome. And I wanted to make sure that other people felt welcome. I think that was part of it as well. So I had things to say and I was doing this work. And meanwhile, in my own like work life, I was becoming a purchasing agent and um, learning how to manage um, like all aspects of purchasing. There's a lot to it, but it has to do mostly with forecasting and different kinds of purchase orders, bids, et cetera. It's just, it's kind of boring, but um, I learned like a lot of admin stuff and I learned how to manage and navigate like office um, environments, like writing emails and like beyond that, I was taught how to negotiate and how to, um, kind of win over people a little bit, right? When you when it comes to negotiation and purchasing, actually, there's quite a bit of people skills and negotiation skills that you need to have. So they were helping me with my admin stuff, but they're also helping me with like my EQ. Um, so between all of these different things, um, I kind of at one point realized like, I want to work for Fedora. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I just said, I'm going to work for Fedora. So I started applying for jobs. And this is uh, the third job I applied for. I um, applied for this in like, I want to say June or April of like uh, 2019 now. Yeah, something like that. And I applied and I didn't hear back for months. And I was like, okay, I guess that's that's it. Um, but then I got, they contacted me again in October. And it happened like all suddenly I had to do a bunch of interviews and then I was hired as Fedora's community action and impact coordinator. This was a huge accomplishment for me personally. Um, I broke into a field that I never thought I would be in ever. I am a fine artist. At my core, I identify as a fine artist, um, and I'm here doing this thing, and I absolutely love it. Absolutely. Um, I'm getting, like, slightly emotional. But, yeah, it, it's a huge 
thing for me. Somehow I managed to get into this. I jumped, I jumped over into this field, but I think there's a few things that made it happen. I was determined. I was determined to stay committed to something and <laughs> um, stay committed to something. And I, and I did. And I realized that the, the relationships that I had in the community um, meant something to more than just me. Like, uh, it meant something to the other people, obviously, but it was a, a network that I had built within the Fedora community. And that, that meant something. And I felt dedicated to that. And I also felt dedicated to the work that I did in badges and proud of that work, for sure. Um, so what has it been like since I became F cake? I think it would have been so much different if COVID had not happened. Let's be real. <laughs> Can I tell you guys, I had bought a wall calendar and I had written out like all the different trips I was going to take. I had like San Francisco. I had um, Portland, Oregon. I was going to go to Texas. Um, I had a, a trip planned to Raleigh. Um, I had, and then I was planning to go to Ireland and back to the Czech Republic. <laughs> and I was considering a trip to India. So I have to say that my first year as F cake was not actually what I expected. I expected, yep, I was supposed to go to France too. Um, the first year of being at Cake has not been what I expected. And I'm okay with it. I'm, I think it's given us a really interesting opportunity. So, you know, when you are, let's recall a hundred years ago, <laughs> back in summer of 2019, um, when we were traveling constantly and things were like really, really busy and life was constantly on the go and you were like, oh my gosh, when can things stop? And I just want to break and things to pause. You ever have that feeling? I mean, I have had that feeling. I'm sure some of us have. This is kind of like a weird chance to have that pause. So I'm like trying to make the best of it. Like what, what are those things that I've always been like, well, I want the time to do this thing or I want the time to do that thing, but I'm never home long enough to get into this or that or blah, 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 blah. I feel like I had this weird chance to um, take a pause. And I'm going to say some moments I'm like completely at peace with it. And some moments I'm climbing up the wall. So it's a, it's a toss up on how effective um, that line of thinking is. Um, there have been challenges. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the joys. So this event is a joy for me. You guys, I'm, I'm connecting with all of you um, one by one over the last three days has been awesome. I didn't expect to host the conference quite the way that I did, but I think it was perfect for, for this. And I think that it was it was fulfilling for me to be able to connect with each one of you personally and talk with you and chat with you and see where you're at with your life. Um, just really, really awesome. Like coming out of this weekend, each day I've just felt uh, my heart is full and I want to <laughs> take you all out to dinner and uh, celebrate the work that we do because we're pretty badass. So this is one of the things that has been the most fulfilling. Nest with Fedora, super fulfilling. I'm just going to say that what made it the best was the people. You know, we got into the platform and people were chit-chatting and with their personality and kind of letting it all hang out. And that was what made it great. Um, I put a lot of work into it, though, and that's also what made it great. I really put a lot of work into that um, event. So seeing people react to it the way that they did was awesome. Um, and I put together the swag thing, like I coordinated all the, the swag and, you know, 
bought the things in time and made sure it was all in the right place and dealt with people's addresses. Oh my gosh, so many personal emails back and forth about phone numbers. Wait, I need your area, your country code um, to get these this swag out to people. Um, but like seeing the tweets of, of the people, um, just absolutely loving it. I, my heart was just so full. I was so happy that I had brought that joy to those people. Really, that's like, those are some of the most fulfilling things. Um, the ambassador slash community outreach revamp. I'm super proud of that. Uh, I wrote that proposal based off of like a bunch of thinking <laughs> that I did on that. It was funny too, because when I first got into the position, <laughs> Matthew and Ben made me a document that was things for Marie document. And like at the bottom, it was like, probably don't do anything with the ambassadors <laughs> for a while. And uh, it was funny because like, <laughs> only like four or five months in, of course, like I'm working on ambassadors. But I think it was because Justin wrote something on the ambassador like ticket and the conversation was started again. <laughs> uh, the conversation was set up again. And you know what I said? I have the resources to make this happen. And that's what I did. So I'm super proud of that. I wrote that. We've gotten so much feedback. We've gotten uh, a ton of involvement. And um, if people wanted to drop some stuff in the chat, Yes, I agree. Uh, if someone wanted to drop like a link for the, the community outreach stuff in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, so yeah, that's been a super success for me. Um, there's been cons, not getting to travel. That's kind of really, really sucked. And I, I know everyone's in it with me on that. I have a roof over my head and food to eat and I'm very thankful for for being safe right now during this time. Um, COVID has created an interesting uh, thing happening in this world. And I'm just gonna share quickly, like this has been the most challenging part of the F cake role has been code of conduct. And uh, from what I can understand uh, in previous years, we've only had one or two incidents a year. Since COVID began in March, we've had like 15 incidents. So <laughs> one incident is like pretty emotionally taxing. Um, and it's really on myself and Matthew to handle these incidents. Um, so just even one can be like a lot depending on what it is. Each thing is different. Um, and then when you, when they're getting opened like one every week, it's like, when, when will this end? And I think that I came to a couple conclusions, like COVID has put people on edge and people are not in their usual routines. So they're quicker to react emotionally um, people who regularly have some behavioral things, maybe they're a little bit hard to work with, kind of lose their, lose control of their emotions, um, more often. Um, Another part of being the F-Cake is getting personal messages from people. I think in some ways people see me as a community, uh, a symbol of like community. Um, and so therefore they like, oh, this community person, I have a thought about the Fedora community. So therefore I will message her <laughs> and tell her my thought about the Fedora community. <laughs> and it's like, that's great. I'm just trying to do my job and live my life. And you are giving me a laundry list of gripes that you have about how things are run. And I might not actually have any control over how that's handled. So that's one thing. 
another thing is something that's kind of hard to admit and say, but there's some people who kind of are not great people or because of their circumstance, that's how they come. That's who they become, right? So there are people who message me with things that are not nice. Um, so, right. So like, I would say that the hardest, the hardest part about being that cake is is dealing with this this stuff. And I'd say that it's mainly because of COVID. You know, if we hadn't been all thrown into this thing together, I don't think um, it would have gone this way at all. So it's just a really interesting thing. And I'm, I'm still doing some processing on it. And how I dealt with it all was I took some time off. I, I stepped back a little bit and I worked on my boundaries. And I said... What do I need to do to take care of myself? Let's set up some uh, some boundaries and rules to make this a bit better. So yeah, um, that's been like kind of my past year, the pros and cons. And I would say I'm starting to feel comfortable in the role and I'm starting to feel like people are also getting excited about the work that I'm doing. And I sense, um, I, I don't know if, I don't know why I'm thinking, maybe I'm just hopeful thinking, but I feel like people are very active right now. And it's really exciting for me um, to see people um, just working on all these different, different projects. I mean, it's, I've seen people in the chat room is more active than ever. Um, and I don't know. I. I want to think part of it is because I'm here with a lot of energy and excitement um, for Fedora. And yeah, I think that's, I think that's my, my, my women in tech story. And I'm, I actually, it took me 40 minutes to tell. I think that might've been the longest presentation. Um, thank you guys for sitting that one out. Matthew, if you want to join, you're welcome uh, to come up here. And if people have some questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Maybe Matthew has a few questions he wants to. Oh, he's got to get on the right computer. Cool. In the meantime, give me one second. All right, I'm right back. All right, who has questions? Okay, hold on one sec. Who? Talking for 40 minutes. Okay, since you started as the F Cake, what has been your biggest surprise so far after working in the community for years? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are gonna love this. Um, so I feel like this is kind of a touchy subject, but we're going to go there and we're going to go there with genuine honesty. <laughs> so like before I became the FK, <clears throat> part of the Fedora community, I remember things that happened that were maybe like questionable, like we didn't understand why like Red Hat did this thing or like Red Hat made this decision or like why this thing was happening or why this change was happening or et cetera, et cetera. And like maybe there was some kind of like, I mean, hate to use the word conspiracy, but like, like conspiracy is like about <laughs> maybe what Red Hat's agenda is. So I think like going behind the curtain of Red Hat, I'm going to tell you, like, there's nothing. <laughs> like, I was surprised at how, like, uh, hey, Matthew, I was surprised at how there really wasn't a clear structure of, like, Red Hat wants this XYZ thing for Fedora. 
Um, and it, cause like, I think that that was kind of a, that's a perception that might be out in the community, but it's not really quite like that. And I'm actually doing some digging on trying to understand how priorities come to Fedora, because that's something as a contributor, I always wondered about like uh, just different, different methods. Like how, how do they all funnel into Fedora? So anyway, that was like my biggest surprise that it, it's not very well laid out in the background and it's really driven by me and Matthew and Ben and, and, and we're the ones doing it for real. <laughs> and with you guys, with your help. So anyway, Matthew, did you have any questions for me? Yeah. Uh, I was kind of thinking about your conference experience and obviously having, you know, more representations in, in the community kind of helps make that better. Um, it makes it easier to fit in if, you know, you, aren't the only woman, or if you aren't the only person who's not dressed like a 1990s college student. Um, <laughs> yes. Feel seen. Um, but like, uh, uh, what what can we do at our conferences, events, and just day to day in Fedora to um, make it more comfortable and to make it safe so those kind of experiences don't happen to people? So I want to say one thing. I think we're beyond that cringeworthy of a moment. Because at like Flock in Budapest, there was like, I'd say over 30 women there and there were plenty of women wearing dresses. Um, so I think that that it's actually become a little bit more easy for um, that expression to happen already. And I think that representation is one of the biggest things, though. So, um, I think having events like this, like I was thinking about the Fedora Women's Days that I've been at before, and it was like a small group at a local place. Um, I actually am really loving this. Like the fact that we're able, like, cause there's so, there's few women contributors who are like core contributors. <laughs> so it's really good for us to connect with each other like this. And we live all over the world. So I think like continuing to have a um, global network for women to get connected into for Fedorans, I think that's great. And being able to see each other face to face like this and being able to connect and be like, oh, I now know you versus just through IRC or a chat room. Yeah, that's always valuable for everybody. Uh, Maria's got a question in the. Do you want to read it just for the video? I will. Yeah, uh, Masha asks, do you have any tips on how to overcome the need to constantly check in with everyone on the work that I'm doing? Wait, I don't understand the question. The work that who's like checking in about your own work or checking in about um, work that other people are doing that's related to the work you're doing or like basically check in like. How, okay, you know, I got it. I understand. So I think the idea, I think the question is asking like, um, how can I feel confident in just doing the work without getting it reviewed constantly or like all the time? Um, so I'd say a couple things. So like when it comes to um, design badges, it's about finding the resources. So we have a style guide for the badges and it's about studying that and learning that. Um, so instead of asking for like each individual, like, oh, I'm, I just changed this one thing in the badge or just changed this one thing, in the you know, modeling your design after the um, aesthetic of Fedora's design or specifically badges. So I can speak from that angle. Um, and I'm kind of curious, maybe Matthew can talk a little bit actually from like the development or engineering side of that. I don't know if he's paying attention. Oh, network problems. Shoot. Um, it seems to have cleared up. It was um, you were in slow motion like a robot, so that was. Uh, um, yeah, I guess w one thing in Fedora in general, um, which I, I'd like to encourage, and it's hard to do, but um, you shouldn't need to ask permission to do things that can always be changed later. Like if you've got a design or something that you feel good about, um, say here it is. 
um, or if you have, you know, and this is just like, you know, people doing packaging in Fedora do this. If you're the owner of the package, you make an update and there it goes. And, you know, you want to make sure that it doesn't affect other people, but as long as it's, it's, you know, your, your area, uh, you do it and then you work with other people around it, but, uh, you don't, you don't need to ask permission for it. Just go for it. And then, you know, if there's something that needs to be adjusted about something, it can always be tweaked later. Um, but the, the default should be you're empowered to do it. Uh, which I know that's a hard to build up a feeling to do that, but, um, you know. It is not just me. Yeah, all right. Thanks, guys. Uh, it wouldn't be like a presentation without that. So, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, would you like I, to repeat? <laughs> I think I was saying something like, "Yes, I agree." Mm, very good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so wise. Right, right. So very, very wise. Um, but yeah, uh, any other questions from the chat or from Matthew? Otherwise, if not, I'll do my little scripty thing. Cool. All right. All right, here well, we go. You got a question. Oh. Here came one. Some it started a question. It was, do you feel that the badges and oh. now I'm in suspense yes, have really. changed the community spirit? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I have to say I was not in um, the community before badges existed. So maybe Matthew might even be a better person to comment on this, but I'm going to say that um, it is seems integral in our culture. People talk about it constantly, constantly. Um, <laughs> so I think it brings a very uh, lighthearted and fun side to our community and the work that we do that uh, I don't want to say necessarily dry because uh, most people find it really fun. <laughs> Um, but like it, to an extent, it's not very shiny, right? So I think like making a shiny thing to go with that effort that you've made is really an important thing. And uh, to add to that, I think it's one of the most important parts of community management and community health is recognition, you know, recognizing people for the work that they've done. So yeah. I do think that badge. Oh yeah, Matthew, you should comment too because you were here before. Oh. It's yeah, I think it did. It, it kind of something that kind of fit into the culture we had, and people have that little like um, a little bit of. There's some competitive spirit in getting the top badges, but a friendly, you know, friendly competition. People were happy to compete over something meaningless. I think, um, right, and that kind of is, is the fun of it. Um, you know, the meaning comes from comes from itself, not from you know it being an actual recognized prize or something like that. And so people are happy to compete over that. Um, and I think um, kind of the sense of whimsy in the badges with your, um, you know, animals and the different, um, you know, uh, also the taxonomy of which animals go to which badges, stuff like that. I don't know, that that's uh, awesome. Um, and yeah, so I think, I, I don't know if it quite, I don't think it, it like by itself like reinvented the culture, but it reinforced a lot of the positive things we've really we have. Um, and I think people really enjoy it. And I think continue to be a tool. I'm really excited for some other you know, future things where we have like, you know, uh, badges to help new contributors, you know, earn this series of five badges um, as a new contributor. And then, you know, you're a whatever Fedora <laughs> you know, level one yeah, something. You get you get set and you earn badges for your badges. That's what you gotta yeah. do. Um so bad so badges is actually uh in the process of being updated and moving to Badger. So I'm hoping within the next six months hmm, we'll we're gonna see something new. We're gonna see hopefully yeah. a website that's working. 
Um, did you know that the way to manually assign award, uh, manually award a badge and know that it works is if you get an error? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I do that all the time. Oh, yes. 500 error. Cool. The badge has been assigned. If you don't get an error, then it's um, it, it hasn't gone through. Uh, so there's, uh, <laughs> there's some things need to be be worked on. But uh, no, I, I, I'm just pointing out because um, it's funny because like we'll do just a workaround. It's like, oh, yeah, great. Perfect. It's working. It's no bother, yeah. no bother here at all. Yeah, right. um, okay, so I'm gonna read my. Uh, oh, my let me script. let me drop off the video here. No, for no, you no, to do don't. That. No, you don't have to. You can just chill because we're gonna edit the video, and then afterwards, I just okay. wanna do some closing remarks and let <clears throat> say anything you might want to say. Um, so here I go okay. quickly, but you might want to mute yourself. All right. Okay. Hi, my name is Marie. I am from the U.S. I am a woman and I speak English. We are from different countries. We speak different languages. We are of different cultures, but Fedora unites us with open source. We are Fedora. <laughs> Woohoo! Nice. Okay. Okay. So that actually is based off of our Budapest video. I am so excited to see. Um, the content that we make from from this weekend's sessions. Like, I have a ton of ideas, and I just can't wait to unroll them all. So I hope I can get like, a small <laughs> team together to do this. Right. I already had a couple people messaging me about it, though, so we're good. I found the, all the talks. I didn't make it to all of them, but I plan to watch videos of the ones I didn't make it to. I found all the ones I saw so inspiring um, and just made me feel great about community and about Fedora, even even when their problems exposed, I think you know, it just shows a lot of positivity and a lot of strengths that we all have and that all of you uh, bring uh, to Fedora, all of you, Marie, all the other women, non-binary people, and men on the, on the chat here as well. I appreciate all of the men who showed up to be in the audience and be part of this. That's, it's important um, part of know, being an ally and being inclusive. So uh, again, yeah, so much thanks to everybody. Cool. So my remarks are more extended. I don't know, Matthew, you're welcome to stay on, on the- <laughs> No, no, it's, it's, it's your show. You should have the extended <laughs> remarks. Uh, okay. Do you want so me to just, stay on or should I drop off? You're welcome to stay on because I think you'll have comments right. on what I'm about to say okay. too. Um, so I kind of wanted to like, you know, as the, the three days have happened, I've been taking notes slash just uh, thinking and pondering on, you know, what everyone has been, been sharing. So I wanted to just talk about a few of the, like, I don't know, general overall lessons that we can, like, take from these stories and um, share with other women, non-binary people, and men in our life. Um as a way to bring positivity into uh, our world even more, right? So here we go. Um, these are some of the things that I really noticed in each one of the sessions. Um, taking the leap. Taking the leap. Not being afraid to do the thing. Um, realizing that um, courage does not mean the absence of fear. It means overcoming that fear. Um, so I think that that was something that was like pretty much in every single session. They were like, this happened, but I just did it anyway. I just kept doing it. And I took that chance and I did that thing. Um, next, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, I know sometimes it's hard to ask the like, empty room questions or whatever. Uh, I get that. So maybe you find a side way in and you talk with somebody just like, hey, I'm working on this thing. Can I private message you? And they'd be like, sure, most likely. And then you can ask that, that question that you might feel a little self-conscious about privately. Just one way to handle something like that. But don't be afraid to ask those questions um, because that's the only way you're going to learn. Um, seek out 
mentorship in some way or another. Um, basically, every one of these people has had a personal connection with someone in Fedora, and that is how they found their their way here. And I think this is relevant for like most community type work or just life in general, you know? I think in Fedora, the way to do that would be to find people who are doing similar to like your niche thing. Like say you like coding in Python, so you go to the Python SIG. Um, or you're, you know, you're really into typography, so you go start hanging out with the designers. And you just start making friends and talking about common interests. And then once you Font start to- sake too, if you're specifically into typography. <laughs> That's true. And once you start, you know, talking with these people that have similar interests as you, then you can start being like, hey, I have this question. I was just wondering how this thing works. And that's when you get the links and the explanations and et cetera, et cetera. So sometimes when we don't necessarily know how to ask the question or maybe we're not sure, you might lead it up with um, some footwork, right? Um, Another thing that I've been thinking about during this whole time is like most of the stories, the success of the stories was women drawing on personal strength. Um, and I just, I think we just need to like point that out and celebrate that. Everyone was said, I am going to do this. I want this. I knew I wanted this. I heard it in every single one. And um, and you guys made it happen. So I just think that's so impressive and so inspiring. Um, and it makes me feel blessed to be uh, amongst you all. Um, <clears throat> beyond that, I consider like everyone here to be my friend. And I think that like, we are going to be the best support for each other. Like, DNI and Fedora Women's Day and, you know, not uh, Fedora and Nine Binary Folk series, it's not about excluding men. It's, it's absolutely not. We, I, I have so many men in my life that I love. I have so many coworkers that are men that I enjoy working with. Um, it's not about exclusion of men. It's allowing us to to forge stronger connections because this is a hard place to be as a minority group. This is for us to be able to support each other and hear these stories and draw strength upon them, send them to other women in our life when they're up on YouTube and say, hey, I heard this story and it reminded me of you. Um, so I really, I think, we're, we're the best support network for each other. And, um, and like I said, we, we welcome men too. It's just about connecting with each other because there's so few of us and I think it's important. And, and making that group um, and building that culture amongst ourselves as women too, as being supportive. Because I think we all know um, like the queen bee thing and we kind of all come up against that. If you're a woman, you know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, like kind of women who put down other women kind of thing. So uh, we, we need to build a culture where we're supporting each other and lifting each other up. That's another big part of it. Um, so I just wanted to, to point that out, that the strength that we have, the mentorship that we have, all these different connections, it's the person power. Um, that's making um, women in Fedora really great. So yeah, those are my thoughts um, about the conference. It's been awesome. Matthew, I don't know if you have anything to say after that. Yeah, I think that was very well said. I don't know, have a lot to add to that. I can talk more about you know, confidence and being insecure and those kind of themes. <laughs> I think those are so uh, in, like, you in, know, in that and that's true for men as well. But I think it's a thing that particularly when you're a minority group and particularly just a lot in the way that women often present, um, you know, it, it, it makes it a step harder 
um, to both. Again, there's two things. First of all, the like, I'm not sure I'm qualified for this, but I'm going to go for it anyways. Like, don't wait till your qualifications are lined up. I said this in a chat earlier, but um, there's a study on this and men are much more likely to apply for jobs that they don't think they're qualified for and then assume that they'll be able to get it and grow into it than women are. And that is a, a lot of a lot of gender imbalance comes down to kind of that um, being able to go for something, you know, where you, where you might not be qualified. It also ends up with, you know, a lot of people un unqualified in their positions, but that's a different problem. Uh, but just like g go for it. And you, you have the ability to learn, you have the ability to grow. And also the people who are making the decisions for, you know, is this the right job for me? Also, uh, if it is a good job, they should be able to appreciate that you can uh, have the ability to grow and you might not have, you know, 100% of the things they're looking for, but that you have the potential to get them. So. That's super important. And the other thing about questions is also a, a confidence thing. And I think Marie made a great point of you can ask questions, you know, on a side channel where, you know, it's where it's not embarrassing, find a friend and ask them questions. But it's also super awesome to don't to ask questions um, that you might think make you sound stupid. Like you don't have to pretend that you, you know the answer to things. And if you can ask a dumb question, it may actually be the case that lots of other people have that same dumb question and you're doing two things. Oh, you're doing three things. You're getting an answer. Um, you're showing that, you know, it is, it's okay to ask questions and you're showing other people that, you know, um, uh, it's, it's safe to do this. Um, it's yeah. Uh, wait, there's support. a third thing. That was I, support. Only two. I had a third one. I'm not good at counting, but, uh, <laughs> I support option yeah. two, but I also think yeah. um, it's just speaking to this crowd specifically, I think it's important to give people like the the permission like like within our culture that this is an okay thing to do because it's not easy. And I think people need to access yeah. this information and someone to talk to in different manners. So that's just that's that's my reason for promoting it. Definitely. Right. If you're confident yeah. enough to ask a question in the channel, go for it. I mean, there's welcoming people yeah. there too. Definitely. And if, if you are, um, oh, I know here, these are my three things. You get the question answered, you get it answered for other people and you show people that it's okay to ask questions there that I summarized it in three. But I also want to make it really clear. Anybody listening to this, anybody, like if you want to ask me a question in a side channel, like a private message or whatever, I am happy to do that and I will never think the less of you or for asking a question about something that, you know, um, you might think ought to be obvious, but there's so much that ought to be obvious that just plain isn't. That is probably not you. It's probably that it's something that needs to be explained more clearly. And I'm happy to do that for things that I know or to find someone who knows the answer for things that I don't. Plus pluses for you. <laughs> in the channel here. And Alberto says, I love this talk. Um, yeah, imposter, you know, you kind of were talking about confidence and stuff. Imposter syndrome is definitely a common topic. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people, a, a lot of people deal with this. Um, I've definitely dealt with it too. Um, yeah. And it's, this is a topic that we can be open about with each other. And I think that's cool. So, you know, when those feelings come, talk to somebody about it. Um, cool. Well, I've been talking for like an hour. I think I'm good. I think <laughs> I'm, I'm time good. Time to go get some tea. Yeah, I think, and just relax. Like, uh, this has been a really nice weekend. It was a different pace than Nest. And it was very uh, personal. I really enjoyed that. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Thank you, everyone, for coming and taking the time out to do this, to do this with us. And uh, hopefully we can just learn and improve for next year. I'm gonna get out a survey for people so we can hopefully make some improvements. And um, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, awesome. Farewell. Thank you so much, Marie. Everybody give Marie a gigantic thank you for all the organizi organizing she did for organizing. this. Organizing. Organizing, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right.
Yes. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. I'm just enjoying these these comments, so I'll just sit yeah, here for one second. Should. But bye. <laughs> uh, all of my wonderful friends. I miss you guys. I wish I could give you big hugs. Miss you. I miss you too. Very welcome. Thank you, everybody. And I will see you online.